Delayed transfusions in major hemorrhage, lessons from shot. This video introduces the issues identified by shot in reports of delays in treatment of hemorrhage since 2010, after the National Patient Safety Agency, the NPSA, published a rapid response report highlighting deaths and serious harm experienced as a result of delayed transfusion. In response to the NPSA report, hospitals were required to take steps towards reducing delays. However, review of delayed transfusions reported to SHOT between 2010 and 2020 found a total of 809 reports, with the numbers increasing year on year. In this 11-year period, transfusion delays contributed to 54 potentially preventable deaths accounting for 25.5% of all transfusion-related deaths reported to SHOT. SHOT reports indicate suboptimal management of major haemorrhage and every effort must be made to prevent these delays. What are the problems? In the management of major haemorrhage, several factors can contribute towards delays. Activation of the major hemorrhage protocol, known as the MHP, involves many different steps and groups of healthcare professionals with the potential for weak communication links. A major factor in cause of delay is poor communication. In the two-year period between 2018 and 2019, poor communication was an issue in 90% of 50 MHP-related reports playing a leading role in many of the delays reported here. Recognition and unfamiliarity. It's not always easy to detect major bleeding, particularly when concealed, as in gastrointestinal bleeding and leaking abdominal aortic aneurysm. Staff might be inexperienced in the management of hemorrhage in hospital areas where it occurs only rarely, for example, in paediatrics. Activating the Major Hemorrhage Protocol Activation of the MHP requires contact with switchboard. However, bleep or telephone failure and confusion between staff about who's responsible, for example for alerting the porters, are all contributing factors in delays. Patient movement and location Transfer of the patient between different clinical areas results in delays when there's poor communication between staff about the patient's location. This impacts on the delivery of samples and components to and from the laboratory. The distance between the patient and the laboratory can also contribute to delays. Laboratory delays. The laboratory staff process the sample, check the blood group and antibody screen, and as long as the correctly labelled samples have arrived in the lab, the staff can release components for delivery to the clinical area. However, mislabeled samples can slow this process. Blood transfusion. Blood transfusion to the patient can be delayed by poor or absent venous access. Stand down. Poor communication between the lab and the clinical area about when the episode is over can impact other work in the laboratory which might have been put on hold. It should be noted that there is variation in the types of major haemorrhage and some hospitals have different protocols for different emergency areas. How can we better manage major haemorrhage and reduce delays? Remember the seven T's, trigger, team, tranexamic acid, testing, temperature, transfusion, and time to stop. Trigger. As we touched on earlier, recognition of bleeding is not always straightforward. Just remember that it is important to recognise that an increasing heart rate and falling blood pressure are cardinal signs of bleeding and need urgent action. The activation may be triggered by different healthcare professionals, so all should be aware of the trigger phrase given to switchboard. Team. 
Several different individuals may be involved and they need to be coordinated by a team leader. Availability of and contact with the porters can be an issue. It is vital that there is regular two-way communication between the clinical and laboratory staff and to check the phones and bleeps in regular drills. Tranexamic acid. Tranexamic acid has been shown in clinical trials to improve the outlook and so should be part of the hemorrhage protocol and be given to trauma and surgical patients as part of the emergency treatment. Testing. It's important that correctly labelled samples from the patient are sent to the laboratory urgently before any emergency components are transfused. This assures that the correct blood group of the patient is known. Temperature. Avoid hypothermia. Place warm blankets and use blood warmers. Transfusion. The biomedical scientist needs to release components urgently without requiring confirmation from a haematologist, although they should be informed as soon as possible. Some major hemorrhages require many components in a short space of time. Rapid availability is important, but afterwards it is a legal requirement to log the donation numbers. Thawing of frozen components will take 30 minutes or so. A minority of hospitals, usually with major trauma centres, will keep pre-thawed frozen plasma. Time to stop. It's important to notify the laboratory when the emergency is over, as the staff need to continue with other work which may have been put on hold while the major bleed is dealt with. It is essential that major haemorrhage protocols work seamlessly. In 54% of delays, the major haemorrhage procedure was not followed correctly. This is why drills and engaging in regular debriefs and audits are so important, and these help to improve practice. Otherwise, how will you know that your pathway works? To summarise, follow these key steps. Recognise the blood loss. Resuscitate, call for help. Stop the bleeding. Give tranexamic acid and prothrombin complex concentrate for reversal of anticoagulant if indicated. Use a team approach and appoint a leader. Use an emergency runner if possible to transport blood samples to the laboratory and to bring components from the laboratory. Communicate with the laboratory early and clearly and update regularly. Know where the emergency group O D negative red cells are kept. Use major hemorrhage packs as required. These usually contain a fixed ratio of red cells to fresh frozen plasma, but remember that FFP takes about 30 minutes to thaw, so may arrive after the red cells. Coagulation tests should be monitored regularly so that plasma and platelet component transfusion may be directed by the need. Don't forget to tell the laboratory when to stand down. In the National Comparative Audit, this only happened in 47% of 826 cases. Further information can be found at www.shotuk.org forward slash resources forward slash current hyphen resources.